Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alan with Center Consoles Only, and we are finally here at the main event everyone has been waiting for, and it's the official walkthrough of the CV Boats 450Z. With me today, I have Ariel Pared, one of the co-owners of CV Boats, and Rob Cady, VP of Engineering. So, you guys know what we're going to do. We're going to dissect this boat and take a full hour, maybe more. We'll see how it goes, but really get into detail that most viewers don't get the opportunity to speak to you guys about they might not be able to have the time to walk through and get this information at the boat show so we really want to take every moment you guys have available to go through every piece what was the story behind it how it came together uh some of the innovative designs and parts that we know about with your console just get into it so if we can start kind of here at the stern at the engines work our way forward you guys have the platform go to town all right alan thank you very much we really want to thank you guys. Uh, it's been a great event, and we sure. are looking forward to showing off this uh, new flagship. We are proud. Uh, I tell you, I'm giddy. I've been running the boat all weekend. <laughs> We've seen we you. really, <laughs> really got it together at the last moment, so we're glad we made it, and uh, we're really happy to share this, and I think uh, everyone's going to really enjoy this boat. For sure. All right, so let's start in the back. Well, here we, we're going to start with uh, the Mercury 450s. i got to tell you, this has been a great partnership. Mercury for us has been... An incredible partner and the new 450 is uh nothing shy of amazing it you know it says racing but to be honest with you it's a true mercury through and through from you know how reliable how quiet and i can't say enough about the power the engine mm -hmm. makes power it does it well it's relatively uh you know it's great on fuel below and even at the top end it's still you know pr pretty pretty damn good so yeah. we love the package one thing you're going to notice with us is this is a big 45-footer, but it is a CV DNA through and through. When we were done and Rob designed the boat and he shows me the rendering, and I'm like, you know, what, Rob, what I really like about this, I know it's a CV. And I think everyone will kind of get that too. 100%. So let's start here. So fishability, number one thing for us. We brought this transom as close as it can be to those engines. I am literally can put my hand on those engines. The idea here is you're on light tackle you can get around the back of these motors. And then talk about clean. We really took this to a new level. We eliminated the, the motor well. No motor well, no exposed bolts. I mean, it's clean, clean. You know, obviously we got some rigging tubes. Yep. One day all that'll go away and we'll have a fuel line, but for now we still have some rigging to pass through there. Uh, we have the Seastar Optimus steering system. That has been another incredible partnership for us. We really do enjoy working with them and we'll talk more about them at the helm with the joystick. Very good. Uh, one thing that has gotten really popular is this new design with the corner live walls for us. So when we decided to build our flagship, you know, I talked with Rob and I said, Rob, you know what? The 43 fish around was my favorite boat to fish on. Those live wells kept everything alive. They did, you know, from the thread fins, you know, to the very sensitive speedos to everything. It was just a great live wall. So we were able to add some... We got, I think they're up to like 42, 43 gallons. We got the clear windows and we got the clear tops. So this works well. We've got the toe kick underneath. So if you're into that corner fighting that fish, you know, you're not pushed away. So you're not going to have any trouble bringing that sailfish or bottom fish around the corner. And we have these live walls. So that, that was awesome. A feat we really like. We kept the back really clean. Another requirement for fishing was, you know, we want to sail fish on this boat. That's one of my goals is to fish the series this year. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, while above deck wells are great, I hate them. You know, I, I don't <laughs> want to see anything on my deck. So, I, you know, I challenged them and I said, Rob, I want four live wells in the back of my boat because I want to be able to carry every type of bait and I don't want to have to deal with stuff on the deck. So we've got, I think these are 43 and these are what, Rob? They're 45. 45. So we've got 43, 45. We've got four of them in the boat clear wells. Another thing you'll notice, the rocket launcher isn't in right now, but a rocket launcher goes here. So you're literally going to be back here. And if you're the guy putting the bait on for me, you're working these two wells. Important. We open them away from you. So as you're working this area, you're being able to scoop baits from here. You're being able to grab some baits here. You're being able to rig and everything while he's here and you're still on the line on that side. So really, really important is the ability to fish and this is it. We gave you the ultimate sailfish machine here. You know, yep. another thing that I will tell you that, you know, I hate is when it's really rough, you know, you're standing between these corner wells. 
well, we put a sea keeper in this boat, so now <laughs> we can leave all the wells open, not have any splashing. You know, you're not going to get that no. surge of yeah. water in your not extra that tufts. surge where you're always <laughs> getting wet. Your boots are full of water. You know, because been there. You know, been every there. time you pay for a tournament, it's blowing 25. Of it's course. just you know, you go it's fun fishing. Way. It's not bad. Day you you know you, you put your tournament entry in it. You know, the gods say, oh, you want to go catch fish? We're going to blow it. <laughs> All right. Another thing that's really cool about this boat and something we're testing right now is we decided, you know, we don't want to be going in the build and adjusting our valves. So when we're sail fishing, you want that pressurized uh, bait well. So when you're running, your baits are living large. You know, they're not moving. Mm -hmm. They're hanging out. You know, you, you, you look at them, it, you know, you're, you're moving and the baits look like they're standing still by pressurizing that well. But then when you stop, you've got all this water overflowing on your deck. So if you come down here, Groco Marine built a new electric adjustable proportional valve. So what that does is we were able to program that valve to say, hey, when we're going six knots or below, set to 70% open. And that allows really? my live wells to pressurize. When I go below six knots, that means I'm coming off a plane, I'm slowing down. Let's go ahead and open those valves automatically so my live walls drain. Really? Now, we're testing them. I know people get sk you know, skittish or they're <laughs> like, oh, electric valves. Well, the beauty is nothing really changed. I'm going to go around here. If you want, you just release them, and now they're manual. But really, really nice. They've got a proportioning system and a single touch. The other thing that's nice is you know how your valves get you know, dried up because you don't use them? Pull your boat out on the water. Uh, when your boat's up out of the water, hit exercise valves. The valves open and close automatically, so really? you don't have to go down there. And this boat has seven valves. So as you can imagine, no one wants to crawl into bilge and do that. No. So this is the first boat we've built them on. They've been around, what, a year or two, I think? Uh, actually, these proportional valves are brand new. Okay. And the digital control is brand new. We worked with Groco to develop okay. the digital control, I, so we're super excited. I stand corrected. So, yes, Rob is always on the cutting edge. Uh, so we, we do reap a lot of those benefits. So what's really neat is it's interfaced currently right now to Garmin. So you literally can touch your screen and control the valve. So you can no have way. a fishing mode. You can have a cruising mode and exercise mode. Uh, I think they're incredible. working with other manufacturers. So while you'll see I have Furuno on the whole boat, I do have a small Garmin running the, the Groco app, which is built into it. Okay. So we'll get, we'll get to that on the dash later. All right. And as you can see, there's a lot of speakers. But you guys got a chance to talk about that. We JL did. Audio, I mean, great guys. You know, funny story there is when I was in, when I graduated high school, that was my second job. I worked for those guys. No way, really. So I've known them for a lot of years. So we go way back. So we're very fortunate to have that kind of relationship with them. You guys, everyone got to see the audio and they heard from the experts. So we're not going to touch that. But we do have 5,000 watts of audio. And it's pretty, pretty damn impressive. Yeah, we... Just a, just a reminder, guys, ask your questions for Ariel and Rob throughout this video. What's happening live? We're standing here literally right now at 4.09 p.m. So ask those questions. That JL Audio video, you can go back to the video we did, the broadcast right before this. It'll live on our YouTube channel, so you can go check that out later if you missed it live. So just wanted to drop that in there. Thanks awesome. for the reminder. All right. So let's go back to the live wheel system. So here we go. We had Best Marine build us uh, two three pump sea chest, but Rob worked with, uh, with them to make these oversized. So Rob, talk about how we're using this, not just for the live wells, but what we're doing with these pumps to feed the systems. So Ariel, uh, we designed hydraulically designed these sea chests so that all the raw water, uh, for the entire boat could pull off these sea chests. So for instance, the generators, the, uh, cooling water, raw water cooling for the air conditioners, the raw water cooling for the chiller, um, as well as the sea keeper are all drawing, uh, raw water off these sea chests. So they were sized with the, uh, the two individual fills for each and the overall volume so that the level of water in the sea chest would never go below the top of the pumps. Awesome. And you will notice they've got our logo on top. Mike did a beautiful job, put a little blue in it to make it look like, uh, <laughs> like the boat. So I want to say thank you, Mike, for the hard work. And you will notice there is extra uh, ball valves, electric valves in there. There's a little bit of everything. So uh, we're real, real, real happy with it. And like I said, uh, you know, we really do want to make those baits happy because uh, hopefully they'll make us happy too. Yeah. All right. So let's keep going here. We're going to go. You know, another thing, I know I talked about it earlier, but it is that toe kick. So when you're in this corner and it's rough and you got to get up on that fish, 
there's a lot of toe kick here. Yeah. And it's a you small know, little detail, but it's it's huge. It if makes a huge difference because if you can't tuck your, you know, if you're leaning like this, anything you're over right. by getting your feet up underneath. So For you guys at home that maybe don't understand, that little toe kick allows your foot to drop in underneath there, so you're you know perfectly straight while you're fighting your fish. If you if that was going straight down and didn't have that space for your foot, you'd actually be leaning a little bit. It's more uncomfortable, and they do that basically everywhere under these underneath the live wells, along the transom. Small detail, but it's huge when you're actually fishing these boats in real life conditions. And then let's come back to the transom. One thing you'll notice: we also put another set of rod holders on the outside. It's to clear some rods. So. You know, while if the rocket launcher isn't in and you've got those extra rods, you can get them out here where they're down below your light, light, light of sight. Uh, light, uh, what is it? Line, line of sight. Line of sight. There it there is. You go with a tongue twister. We're live, today. ladies and gentlemen. All right. Go for it. Take two. <laughs> so that was Cut. really nice. Uh, as you will see, there's a lot of rod holders. A lot of times people come and say, oh, my God, you guys just measure every 12 inches and put a rod holder. <laughs> no, no. There, there really is a purpose for every rod holder. There really is a purpose for every cup holder. Um, you know, we really do spend a lot of time, you know, where that one's designed for straight back. Then you have that one for your drift. That one's going to be your high speed uh, trolling where you want it away from the boat. So and the clusters, you'll notice there's several clusters. That's because your sometimes kite. we'll fly three kites. So we and then there's, you know, eight electric reel outlets. So you really don't want to have to be thinking about, oh, I want to move this to here. It, it, it's all made. So when you're in that heat of battle, it all flows and it all moves well. So one other thing you'll notice is. We don't leave any room spared. So all of our electrical connections are right here and our hydraulic pumps. One thing we're going to really show you on this boat is the thought process and the amount of work that Rob put into this to telling, you know, when we tell him, Rob, we want to be able to reach anything and we want to service anything we install on this boat easily. So later on, we'll go to the machinery room, but this is just another example of how we use every inch of this boat and how everything in our boat you can get to. You're not, yeah. you're, not, you're not tearing something apart to get to it. doesn't get much cleaner and easier to access than that right there. Yep. All right. So let's come over here and take a look at this tackle station. You know, one thing in, is important to us is tackle. It's fishing and it's comfort. You know, the wife often makes that decision or allows the husband <laughs> to make that decision. I will tell you, women, you will love this seat. There's a lot that goes into this. You look at this and you're like, oh, there's a seat. No. From the angle that you're sitting at, so what does our boat sit at normally at rest? Oh, uh, it sits at about three degrees. Three degrees. So on the deck. So what did we give this seat? We gave we a negative. A, a negative five. Five. So when you're sitting, what you will notice is you're not leaning forward. If this was flat, I would be two degrees forward. This seat is designed with a five degree back set. Actually so, holds you so, in. So you're not, when you sit, you're naturally flowing back. So as you're resting, you're not trying to fight yourself to stay in. But again, that seat takes up a lot of valuable real estate. So we said, okay, how can we do this? How can we, you know, give them the comfort but not lose the, t the fishability? So let's walk here. So open up in here. You've got a cooler. On that side, you have a cooler. We have a divider in the middle. They do not communicate. Nothing worse than having soggy sandwiches, right? So what, on this side, I put my drinks. I use ice. On that side, I'll throw a couple packs of, of uh, you know, uh, ice packs. Or I'll even just let the natural cold from this side make you its way cool over. Area. But no water. Again, you don't always have to do that. You can ice it all down with beer, but you get the choice. You know, there's a, there's a nice gas shock that holds it. So this is, this is what we consider to be the, the water side. On the beer side, you've got your beer opener, you know, and a little more comfort. There's a cup holder on either side. Close this up. I'm going to try to do this with the mic in my hand. I can help so you out. Let's go ahead and pull these seats out. Set those right there for me, and I'll show you where those go in a little bit. These are held on with magnets. Then we're going to come here. Open this up. Open up our rigging tray. So one of the challenges wow. was we wanted plenty of rod, um, sorry, plenty of tackle storage. So we gave it to you. Close this up. We have the Plano Edge Series. Uh, not a Plano commercial, but I got to tell you, these things mm. are amazing. Hard paying 25 bucks a box, but they're well worth it because you have hundreds of dollars inside of them. They don't leak. So good job, Plano. So we went with eight of the smaller ones and oh, actually, no, sorry, so, uh, 10 so of the smaller ones. Right, the 3,700. And then four of the deep ones. So we give you the ability to carry lures, everything. You know, this boat, you don't have to choose what tackle you're bringing. 
You can bring it all. You can have it all on board. It's the way to do it. So here's your liter dispensers. We gave you multiple liter dispensers, more storage. And then above, we gave you a set of uh, plier and, and, you know, whatever tools you want to carry with you. One thing that we've always done and it, our boats are known for, place the rig. So we didn't, we didn't give up on that either. Okay. Here you're going to notice we have our fold-down rigging tray. And then you say, oh, there's a Furuno remote here. Well, if you look up, when you're in the back of this cockpit, you know, as a captain, I'm tired of asking, hey, how deep are we? Where are we? So now I don't want to hear it. You've got it all right there. <laughs> and here's your controller for it. I'm going to slide under you here. Another thing that we find at times is when in the dash, everyone is always putting stuff in the dash and they'll kick something with their feet. So everything that's related to live wells, fish boxes, stuff that you really only turn on once a day is located right here. Okay? Oh, okay. So all your live well controllers, everything is right here. In the dash, we, we do the systems that are critical to the front of the boat. So this was really something that over years of, you know, who turned off my live well? Yeah. You know, who pumped out my fish box? You know, that kind of stuff. Now we've got it back here. So hopefully nobody's touching it. But we'll see how that Saving goes. the extra steps to make it all the way up to the helm. Yep. Having it there is, is, is great. Close this up. And I'm going to show you what we did with the cushion. So come on up here with me. Can we get one of those? Yeah. You want to hold the mic? Sure. So what we did here, just like everything we do, there's always a thought process. So that space was made specifically for that. So, yep, put them away. Your cushions are tucked away. Voila. Because the day you're fishing, you might not want to have those cushions, but you want to bring them with you. Let's come back here. Okay, Rob, uh, Rob went ahead and tucked away the cooler for us. As you can see, the cooler's on an electric slide. Uh, that's something that's still in the middle of prototyping for us. We, we are waiting for a new cylinder. We're waiting for some new tracks. But it, we're really happy with it so far. Um, and we'll bring you an update of that. So, Rob, why don't you talk about the machinery space that we have back here? All right. Sounds great, Ariel. So, this is our, our auxiliary machinery space. So, this boat comes standard with a 9kw diesel generator it's a cummins onan ignition protected diesel generator you notice it's extremely quiet extremely reliable uh we actually worked with cummins onan to develop this generator because we felt super strongly that uh, we needed the most reliable generator on the market uh we worked with them to develop the ignition protected version of this generator we're super excited i actually one of the first meetings I had when I designed the boat was with uh, Alan at JL Audio. The second <laughs> phone call I made was to Cummins Onan about two and a half years ago to get this uh, diesel generator coming and developed for us. This is actually the first one straight off the production line from Cummins Onan. Really? So we're really excited to provide this capability to our customer. The other thing you'll find is a CD Well, one thing six. i got to tell you. Hold on. Before we go any further, one thing Rob is really good at, at planning you know, you see all this stuff. It really has been in development for years. And I got to give them kudos for that. You know, sometimes you say two and a half years, but we, we were waiting on the generator and we got it right on time. So we did. You know, a lot of this stuff you'll see through the boat and we'll tell you, oh, we're using this and that. And you've never seen it. It's because years before that, he really does a good job of planning ahead. So thanks, Rob. Yeah. Thank you, Ariel. So. The other thing you'll find in here, so it's standard with a diesel generator, standard with a Seakeeper. So this is a Seakeeper 6. Um, Seakeeper really provides that comfort in every condition. This boat is designed for big water, and it's designed, and like Ariel said, every major tournament, it always blows like crazy. Yeah. So having the, the Seakeeper built in already it gave us the opportunity to really plan around this. These sea keepers are, are pretty big. They have to have their own structural foundation. So understanding that this was really important to our customer, giving them great access around it, having this incredible auxiliary machinery space was really important to us. Like Ariel said, what we want to deliver, and it's part of our DNA at CV, is the ability to rapidly access and maintain every piece of equipment. So what you'll find in this machinery space is you'll find each pump is readily accessible. 
uh, the raw water strainer dedicated to each pump, readily accessible. When you look in here as well, what you'll find is that these pumps are heavy duty. All the gear on this boat is representative of a much larger boat. Mm -hmm. What that does is it gives us really great durability, really great reliability. All this equipment is heavy duty, and you, you won't find this on other boats in this class. Um, and that's the fun part about designing boats for CV is that I find the best equipment available, absolutely the best. And, you know, uh, uh, Ariel and the owners of CV and, and all the CV boat owners expect us to supply the absolute best equipment available on the market. So you'll notice uh, in this equipment room, every single piece of equipment is readily accessible, and it's all really, really uh, high-quality equipment. Quick question. How many gallons of diesel generator hole? So we've got 42 gallons of diesel on this boat. That will run this generator for about uh, three days. Oh, okay. Since you're on that, why don't you talk about the, the, our fuel, our water capacities real quick. Why don't you give them so the numbers? The first thing that we have to talk about when we talk about uh, liquid loads on all of the CVs, and this is uh, true on every single boat that we have, is that the liquid loads are centered around the center of gravity. So as you burn the tanks down, as you burn your liquid loads and remove them from the boat, the boat runs the same way. It trims the same way. So um, that's really, really important to us, that you've got this, this overall consistency uh, no matter what liquid load you have. So this boat has uh, three fuel tanks, three gasoline fuel tanks, totaling 788 gallons. So okay. 788 gallons, to give you an idea, will run you out on this boat, out and back to the Bahamas easily for, for a long trip. Yeah, one of our key design, you know, we, we have a list. And, when, and I know the list grows every time we build a new boat. <laughs> so Rob, Rob likes to joke that, you know, he, the list is only good. For that boat, but we do have a list and, and their requirements, and and one of them is you know range. We try to design every boat to have that 500, 400 to 500 mile range. You know, not always achievable like on a bay boat, but right. you know every big boat. So this boat is designed to achieve that 500 mile range to let you do those extended trips. The generator, honestly, it's yes, it's three four days. Um, it's quiet and you can really run long time. So. We're really, uh, we're really happy. The other thing is that water capacity. We have 100 gallons, right? Yes, sir. 100 gallons of fresh water on this boat. That's a lot of fresh water compared to some of our competitors. Sure uh, is. So that gives you the ability to stay out longer and, and you know, really enjoy the boat, not have to rinse off real quick or, or anything like that. And we do have a water heater on board as well. So, you know, we really tried to deliver all the, um, all the amenities. We'll get to that, but talking about those liquid loads. And then live wells, you know, you also got to calculate those in the liquid loads. So with the liquid loads, when you talk about the balance of the boat, how are you doing that without revealing any of your secrets here? Balancing out different liquids, fresh water, fuel, diesel. You know, Alan, that's how a great that, question. That's, 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 and the other thing that, that really sets us apart, um, you, you've probably heard me say this before. When you hire an engineer, the idea is that, first of all, you expected the engineer to do computations, to be computational, to run the numbers, to think in thousands of an inch, um, to be a really good uh, numerical engineer, number one, and number two, to leverage science and engineering to produce a predictable result. You know, Ariel and Ralph and Moses have invested a, a tremendous amount of money into tooling based on my design work. And, you know, my promise to them and my promise to our CV customers is that when we produce a boat, it's going to do exactly what we predict it's going to do. So when we do a sea trial for the first time, I like to think of it as a validation sea trial. Hmm. You know, we're not wondering what's going to happen. We're validating what we predicted well, well, hold on, would man. happen. We, we, we do wonder, <laughs> you know, but he's here on the nerves kick in so, before you know, let's, a sea trial a little bit. Yeah, let's talk about that. This boat. Probably our, yeah, we can close that so we don't have that noise. This boat, by far our largest investment, you know, uh, it is the biggest, most elaborate, you know, biggest investment CV has made outside of our new factory. Mm -hmm. We did not ever test the hull. We didn't test anything. Rob, to his credit, has gotten it right so many times that we put the faith in him <laughs> that we never, we never, you know, we never ran a test plug. We never put loads of water and there's nothing wrong with that when you're trying out a new product and you don't have the data. We have enough data right now where we're a very data-driven company. So all that data 
goes and that's what he uses to validate his new design. So he designs a boat, validates it from the data. This boat right now is running at the engine heights. We put the boat in the water for the first time and the propellers that we put on, we screwed on the boat. We haven't even swapped the set of props yet. We're going to do some of that, but it is amazing. We can show you a drawing of where he ran. He sent me a drawing the other day or a video of what this boat was running on his computer model, a very elaborate, very expensive computer that he talked us into. <laughs> but it really works. The, if you look at the model, it's a running angle. And then he, you know, then he sent me a video of the boat running. He goes, hey, look at this. At the speed I told you, look at the wetted surface. So truthfully, we've been able with technology and the systems we do to be able to build a boat like this. And I will tell you, get on it, ride it. You have. Yeah. But whoever is thinking about a boat like this, this will impress you. It rides amazing it's you know i've been giddy like i said for the last few yeah. days uh running on two hours sleep a night but you know what dying to get back on the boat and take these customers for a ride so yes thank you rob we did it again and we're excited to hopefully share this with all of you and get you out on it because you know it's big but it it is really a precise machine and it does everything we asked it to do and it does it very, very well. So we're really excited to have the yeah. customers uh, I, experience this. I think, Ariel, it's important to mention, you had, you had mentioned at the very start, the, uh, the DNA of this 45. And one of our goals at the very start of this project, and um, this was a great project in terms of the start. Uh, we implemented some processes that we had never really done um, in a very structured way, some customer focus groups and some uh, voice of customer reach out uh, seminars that really helped us to formulate what this boat should be to, to answer the call from our customers. And that's mm -hmm. what we're all about. And one of the things overwhelmingly that we heard was it needs to be a center console. It needs to be an absolute ocean-going beast. It needs to be an open fisherman. It needs to be a brother or sister to all the other boats that you see lined up there. Mm -hmm. um, and so the DNA of this boat from the very beginning is a hardcore center console fish boat. And incorporating our patented Z-Hull technology and then putting the, the rest of our, our typical offshore dead rice distribution onto that, created a machine that's extremely efficient, that can go really fast when it, when it wants to, um, can go really slow, really well as well uh, to do that, that high-speed wahoo trolling or, or to troll. Uh, we know that our boats, as we've said over and over again with our Z-Hull technology, you got to go fast really well and you got to go slow really well. Right. And this boat that's with really this... Important. With this, with the genetics of this hull form, um, what we've been really, really pleased uh, to, to verify is that the design does all of those things really, really well. And it's a center console at its heart, and it just eats it up. So let me jump in on that. One thing that I tell my customers when I take them out, and typically, you know, I've had a great weekend or a great weekend because I've gotten time to, to do the sea trials. At every other boat show, I'm disconnected from the sea trials. I'm in yeah. the event. I'm, you know, I'm also, you know, running the sales with my team. Uh, you know, we have a great team, but I'm always involved on that part of it. I've been able to show them. And one of my key things is when I take them out is, look, going fast on these boats, most, of the, most boats can go fast. That's the easy part. You know, they don't ride as well as ours, but that's my opinion. But going <laughs> slow is really the challenge. Staying on a plane at 17, 18, 20 knots on those days that it's, you know, blowing 30 and you don't want to go, you know, 35 miles an hour. Right. This boat can stay on a plane. It can high-speed troll. It gives you a clean path behind the boat. So, you know, one thing I do is every time, if you grab any of the guys, you know, I'll show them, hey, this boat can actually go slow. And that's very important. And the attitude of the boat doesn't really change with speed. That's the beauty of our patented step haul. We maintain that running angle. Now, obviously, at 17 knots, we're going to have a little more bow rise. Because, you know, that's just yeah, the course. natural tendency. But we get up to 24, and it's almost identical to 40 knots. So that's important. Now let's go keep talking about the features. Let's actually grab this door right here. Um, well, you want to use that let's, one? Let's grab this okay. one so we can let's catch it. that one so it's easier. Sure. Beauty is we got them on both sides, Alan. Good, good call there. So there we go. We'll grab just wanted to show door. it off. Yeah, yeah. So well, making this it door obvious. for us, you know, we've, we've had this door for a while. Um, but, again, when, when we were building this new boat, we really challenged Rob and said, hey, Rob, you know what? We love the door, but we really want an in-swinging door. We don't want to lose the ladder. We actually want a better ladder. We had some ideas. We gave them a bunch of challenges, and 
we really, and another challenge, simple, simple challenge that, that really was tough on other boats. We challenged them. We wanted a rod holder in the door because <laughs> you'll see us, we're laying out the boat, but in all of our other boats, you won't see a rod holder in the door because it's solid and fused. So we'll talk about that and we can kind of show you that. So this door became a multi-piece door to be able to put that rod holder there. I see that. Which, you know what? To us, it's important. It's probably an expensive rod holder to, to tool <laughs> into the project, but it was important to us. So, you know, it's really not about the individual cost. It's about the overall performance of the boat. Of course. And our customers are willing to pay a little bit more to get that rod holder right there. It's an, so, an important right, piece so of real estate right this. there. Swing it in. So it's an in-swinging door. So now you're up against that floating dock. You're up tied up to, an, to, uh, to another boat. You can swing your door in. What was it? This, what made you guys decide to go swinging the inward swing compared to the other the other models that have the outward? Well, Just, we we this boat was designed with this this. We really wanted an inward swinging door. You have more. So space. we had to redesign the deck. We had to raise the height. So the challenge was once we did that, you're further away from the water. Where on our other boats, you're a lot closer to the water. So that is a lot nicer for not for being able to get in and out of. Mm -hmm. So we don't have the ladder here. It actually arrived Saturday. It's here, but we didn't get a chance. The, the vendor finished it on Saturday. Mm. They were having delays as well with, you know, this whole COVID thing. Of but course. the ladder is here. We'll, uh, we'll get you a video of that, and you can throw it back up. It's a really neat ladder. As you can see, we slotted this here. So what will happen is you'll open this. You'll deploy the ladder, and this piece of deck will close right over the ladder. The ladder will have a big landing on top, all uh, C-decked, to, so it's nice and easy. And it'll have an angle... So it's not a ladder. It's like climbing stairs at your house. Oh, really? So that'll be a really neat feature, and we'll kind of save that for the next, okay. next get-together. So, yes, that was important. And another thing we did is we gave you two fish boxes in the back of the boat. So, you know, you don't have to drag your fish up. So there's a 100-gallon fish box here and another 100-gallon. That one's full of cleaning supplies, so we'll open up this one. Ariel, I think it's, uh, it's really important to mention with the door that if you see... You've got straight access straight in and out of the boat. And we heard this from our customers uh, repeatedly that our customers wanted, particularly if you're a diver, you want to be able to, to lift yourself up into the boat. You need a straight shot in and out of the boat. The other thing is when you're gaffing a fish and you're, it's big enough to bring through the door, you really need to be able to bring it straight into the boat. And so we've got this tremendous uh, uh, port to starboard access from each of these doors. The other thing you'll notice is on uh, on the doors, um, and Errol mentioned we have a multi-part mold, so I, I managed to redesign these doors and the way that we build them so that we also end up with a storage tray no, no, don't under, under each of the doors. Okay. So you've got storage there. Uh, if you've got lines, if you've got, there, there's always, you're always looking in the cockpit for some place to set something where it won't go anywhere. And the beauty of these doors is you got this, this great uh, storage right in the cockpit. You just gave me a great idea. That's where I'm going to store my rear dock lines. <laughs> you know, I was wondering what I was going to use that for. There so you go. That, that is a great place to throw a set of dock lines in the back of the boat. All right. So see, I just learned something. All right. That's the way it works. <laughs> so yeah. So let's talk about the fish boxes. You know, this boat comes standard with three fish boxes. You can have an optional fourth one, but this is a 100-gallon fish box. goes all the way forward so you can put good-sized Wahoo. They're matching on both sides. Now, you will see there's a small indentation. That is the receiver for the ladder. So when you mm. see the ladder system, you'll understand that. But that is an amazing design with that ladder, and that little bit of, uh, of space you gave up is well worth it when you have the ladder. But those oh, big yeah, wahoos will make their way in. box, like you say, that yep. thing, you can't even see where, where it ends under yep. Anthony there. Yeah. So think about it. That's 100 gallons, 400 quarts. Okay? Another thing you will notice is we've gone 100% to slam latches. So yep. we're really happy with those as well. All right. I think it's So, Ariel, maybe while we're talking about the, uh, the fish boxes, we quickly mentioned that all those fish boxes uh, lead into our sump system. So... You've got a high-speed uh, centrifugal pump inside that sump um, so that when you want to pump these fish boxes out, it's really, really quick as opposed to, and it's extremely reliable, the, the submerged centrifugal pump. It's also protected with a, with a filter basket. So if you mm, do end up with fish okay. guts or fish scales, you can quickly just unlatch the door, reach in, grab the it's basket. It's like a pool skimmer. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's a mini pool. I actually think it is a mini pool is it? skimmer. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering what that yeah. was. So, yeah, that does really work well as well. So, like I said, it's the ease of use. 
you know, and, and all those days of uh, those diaphragm pumps uh, clogging up on you and yep. you're trying to pull the fish scales out. Are so gone. We, we went to that. So that's exciting as well. Well, you know, all right. why don't we work our way up here? And, Rob, why don't we talk about this console, this ladder, and some of the technology we use to build this stuff? Errol, this is a really, as you know, it's a really exciting part of this design. Um, when we first started this project, we knew that almost all of our customers in this size boat were going to have a tower. And we knew that we wanted a, a windshield system for this boat. It, the uh, width of the bridge deck is so large that we wanted to provide some protection for our customers. And we wanted to do something that would really, really uh, provide great visibility and so when we, I looked at the overall design system and said, okay, one of the things that you have with a conventional tower is lots and lots of pipes. And when you think about a tower of this size, gap tower, which on a 45-foot boat is, is pretty normal, uh, you could end up with 20 pipes uh, surrounding the cage for a tower coming all the way down to the deck. Um, that produces choke points. Um, it blocks your vision. Uh, that tower is also so big that it's, you're going to get a lot of flex on that tower. That tower is going to really move around. So we said, okay, how can we improve this? How can we take it to the next level? So the first thing I wanted to do was eliminate all the pipes coming down to the deck. I wanted to clear, clean up this entire bridge deck. And the way I wanted to do it was uh, we built this incredible composite structure called a hull and then we surround it with this incredible deck and and liner uh and all of its composite and then i'm putting metal so i said okay i want to extend the composite structure all the way up so that required us to do some really creative thinking so uh first of all these back legs are the aft supports for the hardtop structure they also have molded steps and on the back of these steps and you can see uh, from where you are, that we incorporated handrails directly into the, the aft part, the, the inside molding of this ladder. So, and we managed to incorporate our uh, closed mold infusion technology, which uh, CV um, has, uh, has developed and really, really, this is the most complicated. This ladder is infused as one part. It's extremely complex to mold, but what it does is it means that there's no structural seams in this part. Yeah, so I'm going to interject there. When Rob designed the boat, he goes to me, you know, this was a tough boat. The toughest part, even tougher than the hull, was this ladder, the geometry <laughs> of this ladder. I didn't believe him, but when you climb it, you're really going to understand this thing has got so many angles, and it's twisting and turning at the same time. So look, all, what does all that mean? What it really means is he built us an incredible top. It's super strong, super clean, easy to maintain. And it looks, and it's, it's, it looks it's very an, sexy. And, it's and, an incredible ladder. And, yeah, and to climb. Super easy. As you're climbing, every step is in front. So typically on these, you're, you're, you're almost like you're leaning back. Yeah. He's able to climb this like a cat. All right, so let's go ahead and talk he's about... Very, he's very athletic, though. Yeah. But, All right, let's let go, try. Alan. All right. Well, these grips back here, the first time I, I saw it, didn't even cross my mind to put handles back here. But, you know, it's amazing how you guys think things through. And it's, I don't know how many, how many you got on the team coming up with these ideas but it seems like you don't let one thing go by you and it's you know it's impressive to see and we definitely admire that so, yeah, so that's the really exciting the part of this is coming down so this is the hardest part on any boat is to come down so the, the really cool part about this is is the indentations at each step guide your feet so every step you're being guided and it's it's really an, an important part of the, the overall design. Well, maybe Anthony can come and, and show this. Anthony, I don't know if you saw, but, you know, this isn't just a straight piece. I know you can't see it from that angle, but there's an indentation yeah. to fit the forward part of your so foot. That, that accepts, yeah, that accepts your foot as it goes in. A little bit of C-deck to give you the grip. Yeah. You have a great, yeah. great piece. So, so, so Errol, this, these ladders are uh, half of the hardtop windshield system. Right. So, so let's walk in and talk about the second row. Let's talk about this console. You know, we one of the requirements, we really did want to have, you know, the second row seating. We did want to have the visibility. A lot of times we felt like, you know, it was all about the driver and not the second row. Why don't you tuck in there and look Why this don't we way? Come so on in can... here so everybody can see it. So from Rob, standing to the sitting position, 
Want to really gave you everything. You've got built-in footrest. You've got a place to put your arm. And one really nice, nice feature. Here, I'll check your mic. Just leave it on. It is on. Can you hear me? Oh, all right. Oh, he's good. It's on. All right. So what I was saying, one really nice feature that we didn't forget you guys in the back row, we gave you air conditioning. Yeah. So we, we put the air conditioning at the helm and also on the second row. Another thing you'll notice is we offset the seats a little bit. The center one is lined up. Obviously, you can't do two centers, but the other ones are slightly offset. So you're actually looking in between the shoulders and the head. So, mm. And we elevated this slightly over the front. So your situational awareness, your ability to look 360 degrees isn't even obstructed by the passenger in front of you. You know, we spent hours putting the, what do you call your guys? Uh, uh, the ergo men. The ergo men, these little <laughs> ergo men. call meat puppets. You know, oh, okay. we, we had the, we, 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 you know, or the, the ergo men are six oh, foot okay. tall. So we had to make a couple Hispanic ergo men, like five, <laughs> yeah. seven. And we actually spent a lot of time looking at their line of sight. So, you know, we, we, we set them in these areas and we actually, in the computer model, were able to look around the structure. So that was really oh, wow. cool. So, you know, you know, people say, wow, this is amazing. I really like it. You know, a lot of time went into these little details because until you actually can sit in a model and look around, it, it really yeah. does. It's hard to tell. You know, you can't just so, look at a one dimensional drawing or a 2D. So drawing we really so we really leveraged the technology. So this entire boat and everything you see here existed in a 3D computer world uh, for about a year before we ever uh, brought it out and started creating plugs and, and tooling it. Mm -hmm. And the, the advantage there was that we could literally, and I, I've, I've over and over again, we could iterate on the design and I could bring uh, uh, people into the boat and, and you could look around. And I did so many animations and so many real-time views and we used uh, the Ergo Men to um, really and help women. us to understand. And women. We and women, actually, yes. Women. And women as well to really understand their ergonomics. All right. Oh, it's great to have that kind of technology, obviously, to be able to test and test and test before you actually, you know, take a step people, forward. And people roll. always ask, wow, you know, how did you guys get this like this? You know, none of this happens by accident. It mm -hmm. really is, you know, a lot, of, a lot of Rob's time, a lot of, you know, Ralph, a lot of Ralph's time. Uh, and these guys going at it, and I'm usually like the guy that comes in and tries to help uh, break the ties, you know, <laughs> so it's good. So we're really, really blessed to have a great design team and just a great, you know, a great relationship, you know. We do spend a lot of time, you know, even just on the social side, you know, so it really helps us. So let's come on up to the helm. Let's talk about this helm. This, to me, the reaction when you stand here for the very first time <laughs> is what I look at with every customer. Because they'll come up here and, you know, it's either, wow, I can't believe it. Look at the visibility. You know, when you get a chance to get on this boat, just come and sit, you know, stand at the helm. Don't even just sit here and look around. You have a view like no other boat I've ever been on. This is the best view of, uh, of any boat we've built. By that, I mean you can literally see where the boat ends. If you can't see where the bow ends, you have no depth perception in a boat. Okay. Right. So it's really hard to be able to dock the boat. It's really hard to be able to come in and pull in between something else because you don't have that ability. You guys have seen me spin where I'm spinning up against the dock. Why am I doing that? Because I know where my bow ends. Mm -hmm. So that's really, really important part. And then, you know, this is what we call the lap of luxury here. <laughs> I'm going to jump on up here. I'm going to sit here and the visibility even gets better. So, you know, we really designed it with that in mind. It's the little details like, if you notice, there's a piece of sea deck here. Foot rest. Yeah, the foot rest. That oh. thing drives me crazy. Everyone wants to put their foot somewhere on your console. So now we designed a place where if you're going to put your feet up, put it on the sea deck. All yeah. right? So from that. Then let's come to the helm. You can drive this from a sitting position. You can drive it from a standing position. We brought the throttles back and pushed the wheel forward. So, you know, if, if you run a lot of boats, you, you tend to be leaning forward. On this mm -hmm. boat, you can put your hand here and you can reach the throttle. So ergonomically, that was another thing we did. We spent a lot of time on this model. Look at this, look at this dash. Those are 24-inch displays there. Here, hold the, the mic a little closer. All right. Yeah. yeah. I said, these are 24-inch displays. We can either go, this is uh, 224 is a 16. We can go uh, 322s. We really gave you a lot of real estate because, you know, electronics have changed. People want more and more and more. But it's the little details that, that really make a difference. So the built-in cup holders, 
We brought everything, all the controls towards you. We pushed the toe kick underneath as well. If you notice, my, my feet are able to tuck in. So if I'm using this as a bolster, we brought the foot rest up. So now if I'm driving at the elevated position, I've got a place to go. Then everything faces you. You're, everything on this was designed. I know, you know, I, I go to cars. Today, it seems like the car companies forgot about the passenger. Everything's driver centric. We really did make this boat driver centric. Everything I need is right here within my touching distance. I don't have to be going outside of it. I can control everything from here. My pilot, we've got joystick, we've got bow thrusters, audio uh, controls, all my switches, multiple displays, my trim tabs. Everything is right next to me, and I don't have to be reaching or asking somebody else to, uh, to reach that for me. So on a big white console, we really spend a lot of time. We've got this beautiful air conditioning, which I can't tell you how happy I am about that. <laughs> We also built this area here for your cell phones. Everybody brings a cell phone and everybody wants to put it somewhere. So we lowered this here. Another thing you'll notice is there's a C-Deck here. It's not done yet, but there'll be a wireless charging station here. So everyone that throws their phone up there, they can wirelessly charge it. You know, another thing that drives me crazy is everybody wants to put their hats on top of my console. And then when you're short, that really doesn't help. Mm -hmm. So we even recessed that up there. So if you throw your hat up there, oh, first of all, it's not going to get that. sucked out by the wind. But anything you put there is going to be, be below the driver's <laughs> line of sight. That, little, that makes a huge difference as they throw jackets and start to throw more and more stuff. You know, by the end of a tournament, you can barely see out over the windshield. <laughs> you know? And, and you know, sometimes the captain's upstairs driving. He comes down. He's like, hey, guys, what's going on here? So you know, we even thought about that. Um, the safety glass. Look through that windshield. I mean, it yeah. is like looking through a high-end car. You know, Rob, talk about the window and what we did for this vision. So let's talk about this whole structure. So first of all, what you have is a one-piece windshield uh, frame uh, hardtop support structure with the console. So no one's ever done this before. Uh, we invented the process to, to actually build this. Uh, there are no structural seams here. You'll notice there's no uh, caulk joints or um, uh, attachment points. Literally, this console is molded as one giant piece. We use 22 different inserts. It's probably the most 20, complicated. 22 inserts. The most complicated <laughs> composite tooling I've ever designed, and I've been designing boats and ships for 30 years. Um, and the amazing thing is, is this entire console is infused in one hour. So we build this console. We shoot it in one hour. Really? Um, so it's super stiff, super strong, and it acts as the foundation for these glazings. These glazings are custom molded. Uh, I designed these glazings, and we have them uh, molded um, by Procurve in Pennsylvania, and they make these uh, custom windshield pieces as laminated safety glass. So what you have here is you've got two thin layers of glass that's bonded to a marine interlayer. And what that does for the customer is, is it makes this gin clear view out these glazings. You'll also notice that they're slightly cambered. That's to prevent uh, glare on the inside and the outside which also really helps you to see out of them. Uh, the other really cool thing is that even the side glazings are laminated. Um, why is that important? Because most glazings on boats are tempered. And that tempering, if you ever look out the side of your truck window, you'll notice a gray pattern with polarized glasses. It makes it really hard to see out those side windows. Uh, so what you've got here is laminated safety glass, like your front windshield on your truck, but you have it on all three panels. So you'll notice there's no uh, pattern. When you look through with uh, uh, polarized glasses, you'll notice it's always gin clear out all the windows. Yep. So one other thing that we mentioned on there. Just one hour is to infuse the part. This takes weeks to load the mold and then Absolutely. weeks to finish the part. Yeah. I wish you could build this in an hour. So yeah, hold on. So you, if you crank this out in yeah. an hour, it'd be yeah. a different story. It'd be tough. So no, there's, <laughs> it takes us longer to build this console than it does to build a 29-foot CV. Just so you guys can put that into perspective. The amount of hours that go into this console structure is more than a 29-foot entire really? build. So wow. yeah, but what you get is well worth it. So let me talk about one point. All of that is great. It is amazing. It's beautiful. But one thing I will tell you, if you've run other boats where the windshield, they'll put a windshield on a boat, but in front of that, they'll put pipe work. So by not having any pipe work forward of the glass, you have no reflection. There's nothing worse 
than having a windshield and then having a set of aluminum legs in front of that windshield because those aluminum legs pick up every light and glare. And what it's happens like is it blinds you off the corners of the windshield. So you look at these columns and you say, oh, there's a big column. You don't even see those because they're, they're at the same dimension as the glass. Now, if I took and put a piece of aluminum leg coming in front of that, it would literally blind you at night. So, and we've built some boats like that, you know, right. some of our earlier stuff. So that was one of the challenges. We wanted the windshield to be at the furthest part of the structure because that allows your visibility. So let's how, go talk how, about... How wide is this console? Just Really wide. Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we'll, uh, I'm not sure. Just, yeah. just roughly. I'm not sure if the people it's at about home five feet. really get yeah. the magnitude of this thing when you're in here. It's, it's absolutely massive. That windshield is, is huge. Yeah, it's wide. Um, feels like a larger than you have in your, in your truck car. Yeah. And no, no this is, this oh, is bigger than most. One thing you, you brought up, it is wide, but it is... People ask me, why three seats? And we go back to the one thing. This is a driver-centric boat. If I did four seats, the driver would be off center. Right. If I put an entrance to the cabin through here, the driver would be off center. And the driver is the most important person at that time. You know, he's in charge of making sure, you know, he runs the boat safely. He's mm -hmm. usually the owner of the boat. And we really want to make that easy. So that's why we made it three rows. This is wide enough to put four seats, but yeah. the driver wouldn't be centered. Makes so sense. that is a really important, you know, it's, it's about that design. You build those design cues. You want those things, and you and you got to do that to to keep you know to keep you know what you wanted at the end is the result, and yeah. the result is the most comfortable driver centric vessel we've ever built. So it's definitely comfortable. These are re release marine chairs, correct? Yes, that that is an option on our boat. Release marine chairs, and they're also building our rocket launcher. Okay. So why don't we real quick before we move forward? Let me show you another really cool feature. Uh, overhead. I don't know if you want to come over here with that other camera because you're not going to be able to see it. So. You know, at CV, we just right. cannot help ourselves. We cannot let an inch of storage <laughs> go. So we've been building kite boxes, and we've been adding them to hardtops. So one of the challenges, Rob, we want to integrate a kite box. So here you go. So here is your kite box. Got two kites here. Honestly, I think I could have 40 kites up here. <laughs> I'm going to put kites, and I'm also going to use this to uh, store my, my uh, inflatable life jackets. So oh, okay. it's going to be a really cool feature. Um, and we're really excited. So why don't we uh, work our way forward? I know we've been at this for a while, so let's start walking Take your forward. time. Absolutely no rush. You know, as we walk through here, Alan, you're going to notice the walkway. You know, again, yep. something that was very critical for us, you know, not to criticize a lot of the other guys, but, you know, they'll build this big structure, but then it's just big. Our boat needed to be fishable. So this is the same height as our 37 our, we kept the gunnel height throughout the boat and the width. So two big grown men can walk through here. As we walk forward, here you have the lounger. So let's talk about the lounger. Oh, before you mention the, the lounger, the gunnel height was something that I noticed right off the bat and something great. Some of these bigger boats get to the point where they're so big and large up here that the bow is unfishable. Un unfishable. No. So it's definitely something I caught it, right off the bat. It's really comfortable. Here you feel just the same as if you were on you can gaff a fish if you're fishing on our 39 you can fish on this boat mm -hmm. and you're not going to once you're up here you know other than the ride and the massiveness of the boat you're going to think you're fishing the same boat so yeah, yeah good 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 catch on that so let's talk about this lounger you know it's a lounger people have done loungers but what was important <laughs> to us was the feeling when you're sitting at that helm so one thing we've noticed in sitting and running a few of uh, the other boats we've seen is they have these loungers that are really tall that is for headroom in the cabin, obviously. This boat was so big, we didn't need that. And we said, okay, how do we keep the ladies? Because this is going to be usually your wife's going to be sitting here, you know, your, your daughters. And one thing we found is that they feel very comfortable as long as they're not sitting above the height of the gunnel. Because mm -hmm. if you're sitting above the height of the gunnel, you feel like you're out of the boat. You feel like in any instance you could be ejected. Probably never going to happen. Right. But we built this lounger so you're at the level... You're, you're below the level of the gunnels. And we made it big. We made it wide. And let's talk about these armrests. You know, we could have done something plastic. We could have done something that doesn't look like fiberglass. But, you know, again, we challenged Rob to mold them in. Those are awesome. So they're awesome. You don't even know they're there. That's the beauty of them. I've had people say, oh, I didn't know those were there. So we did our job. They did not know those armrests were there. Um, that's a molded piece. Hours and hours oh, of I work. Imagine. 
Like you said, but, you, you can you can get that just integrated into the seat itself. When we went to the factory before, I was talking to our guys. I was like, did they actually build that into the build the armrest into the into the part? And the, yeah, well, and that was an it. insert in the mold, so we could build those armrests. <laughs> yeah. And really? then yeah. another thing is when you're hardcore fishing, you know, all of our boats are known for rod storage on the side of the console. Mm-hmm. You know, that was another challenge. We needed to get some extra because you know these are all strategically placed, but we needed these as well. So you know, we were able to put 14 rods on the side of the console. A nice uh, cup holder here. Another thing you'll notice is when you sit at this lounger, we told that if you come around the front here, you can see it, a foot rest. This is important because if not, your feet are dangling. Anytime your feet are dangling, you don't feel secure. So if your kids or your wife are sitting up here and they're sitting up front, this makes them really feel secure. It's also a step for a small child to be able to access the lounger. So, hmm. you know, we're really, really happy with that. The front of this boat, like I mentioned, rod lockers, bait wells, and uh, and a fish box. Let me so get out of your way. I'm going to yep, test this thing out. I'm going to go ahead out. and open I'm up this fish this thing box. out while you guys continue on. <laughs> yep. It's been a long two days. <laughs> yeah, enjoy so it. you guys go ahead. So, you Take know, this is, this is the bow of a 39. Very similar. The boxes are bigger. Oh, this is good. But, you know, this is what we're known for. The nice thing, since we have a generator, we went ahead and put some freezer plates up here. You know, one of the challenges I find is when I go to the Bahamas, keeping my chum frozen, believe it or not. Yeah. After three days, you're throwing it away no matter how good your coolers are. So we put the freezer plates up here. So like Cracking I said... Cracking down ice sometimes is yeah. available. So, so it's really nice to be able to have those freezer plates. We've got everything else we're known for up here. We don't got to get into those because that's a, you know, we these have are, those on every boat. These are really big. They're, these are bigger, but it's I want to show They'll take a five-gallown bucket at the yeah, end of each Yeah, they'll stand a five-gallon. De- yeah, well, let's go ahead and open it up so they can get a peek in it. Why not? They're here. Oh, it's full <laughs> of gear. These are both full of gear. This is all... Yeah, we've got stuff in everyone. Uh, that's our front live wall overflow. But, yes, they're massive. They've got big rod slots in the front. And, again, everything is gasketed, and it's got our CV, uh, it's got our CV logo on the inside. So let's talk about the bow. You know, we wanted a windlass on this boat, obviously a, a, a boat this size. We also wanted, what, what do we get in here, 700 feet of rope? We have 750 feet of rope. 750 feet, feet of rope. <laughs> My goodness. You know, so that was another challenge. If you come up here you and look. Deep, deep drop and, and drop the hook. Yeah. So we Sit also, another challenge we always find is what do you do with those, bu- those bumpers? So we built in bumper holders. That's what those recesses there are for. So if you look at it, a little dirty in there. Sorry, it's been, uh, it's been running all day. <laughs> but uh, we built in so a bumper fits on each side and you're windless, really clean. And another thing is keeping that boat clean in the bow. So not only we oh, built in fresh, fresh and salt water on either side. So the nice thing is it's nice and clean. The door closes. So, you know, for those bloody days up here, Completely keep hiding. it all rinsed. So we gave you fresh and salt. So, yep. Now we're going to go talk about the cabin. Let's walk our way back here. So you come up here, you know, access to the cabin. I think we're going to have to. We're going to have to bring Anthony around. Yeah, we're going to this... have to bring Anthony let around. Me, let me Go ahead. Go ahead. So. You know, we, we brought the cabin door to this side. And, you know, this is something we're in the middle of development. I would say we're 90% there. We're waiting on a newer motor, but it's a single touch opening. So if you hit the button, cabin door opens. Hit it again, it closes. If your hand gets caught on it, it stops. So I don't know if you noticed that. So we'll hit the button, hit it again. Your hand, any pressure stops the door. Any pressure stops the door. Sorry. I've got it. So I'm going to hit it here. That's a great detail with the kids and stuff like that. Yeah, so like you that. come Pretty here. Fun. Now we're going to go down below. So come on in. You know, it's always about the safety features. Let me turn some lights on down below. Okay. And the cabin, like I said, it's really a day boat. I don't know if you can get me in here. It is really nice to come down here because the air conditioning is freezing. <laughs> And it's a nice getaway. You can feel it up here pretty yeah. good. So as you can tell, we have the little high-low table. This is electric. It'll open up here, Anthony. So two to three people can have a nice little meal down here. And, and this will also drop down and it fits perfectly into the groove below us. And that's what puts the filler and becomes one large berth. I know it's tight in here with the, the camera, so we'll kind of try to make it work for you guys. <laughs> Uh, can you shoot wider? Okay, good. All right, so let's talk about the galley. Here we have the microwave overhead. You know, one thing I will tell you, I'm tired of having cold sandwiches uh, 
on the days I'm fishing, so it's nice to be able to warm stuff up. We have storage on this side. Sink here, slide out refrigerator. Plenty of more storage and garbage can. So you've got everything you need to, you know, warm up that food, have a little bite and get out of the heat, you know? So let's Here, come what into what kind of material is this upholstery? Kind of looks like a real and the bathroom. That's one thing that was really important to us. Having a full size head that a grown man, grown man can get inside <laughs> of. So we're really happy with the way that turned out. You asked the upholstery. Everything inside this cabin on the outside is the same material. It's a marine grade vinyl. You can soap it. You can do anything you want to it. It, it is something brand new. Uh, they just came out with it. The color. They've been building this vinyl for a while. But, it, you know, you only used to be able to get this in a leather or an ultra leather. Yeah. And that was very sensitive. So we're really been happy. noticing it. it's very, it's like a plush. It seems like it'd be on the interior of a, you know, Mercedes AMG of some sort. But being marine grade, you know, gives it a really nice touch. Yeah, it's really, really nice. We're really happy with it. Um, like I said, the cabin, it gives you the feel of luxury. And, uh, and it really does get you out of the weather. Rob, you want to talk about that door that we have out there? I know I just gave them the quick... But talk about the technology in that door real yeah, quick. Yeah, there, there's a tremendous amount of development that went into this door. When we decided to do a, a sliding side door on the console, one of the things that was really important to us was uh, we wanted it to dog. In other words, we wanted it to compress a seal and be watertight mm -hmm. um, so that when you are taking green water over the bow, when you're really running this thing in, in heavy weather, uh, that you wouldn't get any uh, water into the, the cabin um, the other thing we wanted was just we knew that um, it was going to get a lot of attention. Everybody spends a lot of time going in and out of the console. So we wanted it to be a beautiful piece. We wanted it to be a show piece. We knew we wanted it to be fiberglass and not just some uh, huge acrylic door. Um, we also knew from our experience um, when I originally designed the sliding door in the 39 and we used the pneumatic system, which we still use today, it was a huge hit. To be able to walk up to the door and just push a button and have that door slide open for, for you sure. mm -hmm. is just a tremendous advantage when your hands are full, when you're in and out of the cockpit, to be able to just hit that button and have it slide open or close for you. Uh, customers really, really appreciated that. So the problem was that I had to invent this door. Um, this door didn't exist. Um, and we also knew most other builders... Uh, the, the typical way of doing this would be uh, what's called a garage or a big sort of blister on the boat that the door slides into and out of. Um, we didn't want any blisters. We wanted this boat to be super sophisticated, you know, almost uh, mega yacht uh, quality. And so um, I worked uh, with our, our uh, automation vendor for this door and um, at first they told me no, I'm, which I'm, <laughs> I'm really used to hearing a lot. Uh, they told me it couldn't be done. Um, so I went ahead and actually designed the door myself and then handed them the design. And they said, oh, I guess okay. we can do this. But it was a big challenge for them um, as well as us. I'm super proud of this door. Um, you'll notice that. And, and it's a, a one-button push uh, operation. So you'll notice the door uh, literally comes down and dogs closed, fits beautifully flush, and it's completely sealed. We've run this boat the last few days. The weather um, hasn't been the most cooperative. And um, the, the cabin has been literally completely bone dry. Yes, let me, let, me, let me get on that. I ran this boat on, uh, was it Friday, in an utter monsoon. As soon as I get back, I call Rob. I'm like, Rob, there's not a drop of water in the cabin. So, yeah. yes, if it was ever going to leak, it was that. that if you guys look at the weather from Friday, I think I left Miami at about 1230. And it rained until I hit uh, Lake Worth Inlet here. Yeah. But I'm not talking about rain. I'm talking about if I didn't have that radar, I don't think I could have gotten here. <laughs> so, Ariel, the, the cool thing about that is it, it just didn't happen by accident. You know, managing green water on the deck is one of the things that we spend a tremendous amount of time doing. We know that everything on this boat at one point is going to have a lot of water on top of it. Everything on this deck. So managing that water, understanding green water, and understanding that to, to work in the ocean the way a big boat like this will work, and actually all of our boats work, you can see you know big, thick green water on top of everything. 
So making sure that you can shed that water efficiently. And that meant a huge amount of work to get this whole thing uh, so that it would shed that, that heavy water. And it works really, really well. We're really excited. No, it looks beautiful. Completely flush. There's not one flaw in it. You guys, I assume, make all this. It's all, all molded. Parts. It's actually all... fiberglass. We it originally is. thought about bending acrylic, but we <laughs> couldn't get it to do exactly what we wanted. So uh, this is a solid piece of fiberglass finished, and it, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Uh, you know, like I said, requirements where we needed to dog down. We needed it to work quickly. Uh, the first one was a little slow, so we <laughs> had to ask the vendor to speed the motor up. So, again, all of this stuff, you know, you look at it Trial and go, wow, how did you do? It really just takes the commitment, you know, Rob's time and our commitment to saying, hey, whatever it is, let's get it done. So, so the first, uh, first powered sliding, uh, self-dogging, fiberglass console side door in the history of boat building. And we're really? super excited about it. Um, the other thing I figured we'd point out while we're standing here is the fact that if you look at the glazings, the really cool part, and it's almost... If you glance at it at first, you wouldn't even notice it. There's no caulk. So you, yeah. look, at, you look at this yeah, windshield, look at this. you look at all three of these pieces, there's no caulking. Why is there Let's no caulking? Here. Let's let him out. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Anthony's still Anthony, in the Anthony, come on out cabin. so you can get this. We, we might be Anthony sleeping by this point that AC, how it's cranking. Yeah. Yeah, I so, don't know if Anthony <laughs> wanted to come out. He was pretty comfortable and there. He was on the couch when I went in there. So you'll notice there's no caulk line on this glazing. Um, we're really excited about this feature because it means you don't have to clean that caulk. You don't have to repair it. It doesn't ever mildew. Um, the way we did that is just a direct bond glazing. So all three of these uh, windshield pieces, uh, which in engineering world are called glazings. So these glazings are direct bonded. Um, on the inside, you'll, the only thing that you'll see is just a, um, uh, a small gasket. And um, the bond line is actually behind uh, this frit. This black area is called a frit. And what this does is it protects the bond line from UV. So mm -hmm. this thing will never degrade. The other really cool thing about, because they're laminated safety glass, my frit is, be is inside. So this painted uh, black that you see here is inside the windshield itself. So it'll never scratch, it'll never become damaged. And when I bond this glazing on, I get a direct bond. The adhesive is adhering directly to the glass. To the glass. Instead of having to adhere to the frit itself, I'm adhering directly to the glass. Last thing, and I could geek out about yeah, a lot yeah. of these. <laughs> Basically, what he's telling you, it's Not gorgeous, it's easy to maintain, beautiful to look through, and honestly, it's damn sexy, Rob. So good job. <laughs> Real quick, before we, uh, we, we finish, also, I want to talk about some of the guys that really came through for us. And uh, if you look up, I have the most beautiful outriggers on the market. I want to thank the guys from Marsh Tacky. They delivered this to me a day, uh, a day before I left. These are one piece or actually we are 30 foot carbon fiber uh, outriggers with carbon fiber spreaders. And all the lines you see are braid. The, that entire rigger weighs seven pounds. So I have a 30 foot rigger that weighs seven pounds. So thanks, guys. They color matched it. They did a beautiful job. And, uh, Wes, and I'm Wes really and Marsh Tacky. I mean, they do amazing work. We know them well. And they're you know top notch crew, nicest people on earth. So it's nice to see them on your boat, and they absolutely killed it. I actually got a question before. I'm sorry, Ruff. Sorry, go ahead. Um, can you run dredges on these outriggers? Is that yes. There, uh, I currently have two lines on them, but they're set up for three. Three. Okay. And the idea is that yes, if we uh, go marlin fishing, which we're planning, the idea is to take this up north and do a couple of those marlin tournaments. Yes, nice. you can pull dredges. Okay. Errol, I, I think we'd be remiss in uh, in not you know thanking all of our vendors. 100. percent Our our team of vendors is amazing. Um, none of this would be possible without the creativity, the hard work, and the, the shared vision with our vendors. We have just an incredible crew and obviously our team at CV. We yep. have the best craftsmen, the best boat builders in the world. I'm convinced of that. Um, I am, I couldn't be more proud to call myself a member of the team. Uh, the craftsmen that built this boat from our tooling uh, operation to our lamination department, to our riggers and assemblers, our electrical guys, um, our, our plumbers, um, all of our hardware and uh, systems riggers. These guys and men and women are an amazing team and the job that they did is just fascinating. And, and they did it with COVID um, during that 
incredibly challenging period and they did it with the same passion that I have. And, and, and we kept it. All of us were so excited to build this boat. Yes, we, that is true. We need to reach out to the guys. We got to tell you guys, thank you. Uh, there were a lot of days where I know you saw this a week ago, a, a week <laughs> before the event. You go, you're going to make it. And we said, yeah, we were confident. <laughs> we had a lot of work to do. Man, we weren't really that confident, but we worked, you know, these guys worked till midnight. Uh, we had the boat in the water. They were, it was at my house. They were there till midnight, multiple nights. Wow. So we want to really yeah. thank the team. Great work, guys. Er Errol. I think uh, I, I also want to personally say thank you to my wife and my kids. <laughs> yes. I spent uh, uh, many, many nights and days and, and really long days and hours uh, designing this boat for, for two straight years. Um, and it's only through the, the good grace and patience of my, my lovely wife, Catherine, and my kids that I was able to do this. So I, I want to thank them. But they didn't kick you clean out of the house, huh? Very, no, very no, they, they, they're they a very, very understanding family. And again, Rob, great job. I want to thank you as well. Super excited. I hope to get you guys out on the water. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. It is, uh, it's quite the machine. Like I said, I've been giddy for a few days. Yeah. And I haven't I think seen Ariel smile like while. that in a, in a while. <laughs> yeah. a while. I think we have some video of that. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> no, thank you Appreciate guys very much. It. All right, thank guys. You, Alan, very Actually, much. You guys we, we, have a, we have a question or two if you want to grab one. You guys, go ahead. Is there a windshield wiper option? Rob, why don't you go ahead? Yes, there is a windshield wiper option. Uh, you can see up here, um, we've got a, uh, a mirror just in front of the mirror. There's a uh, pocket for a windshield wiper motor, okay. and it's designed for a panographing windshield uh, wiper. Uh, so, yes, absolutely, you can get a windshield wiper. Um, the way that the windshield is designed, um, it really, and arrows run yeah. the boat in very, very heavy weather, it really sheds the water it off the water. windshield. So, and we haven't even rain exit it yet. So no. hopefully we can rain exit. But yes, it does have it. I chose not to go with it. Um, I really didn't see a need uh, on any of my other boats. So yeah, well, well, with the angle, know. the rain X, yeah. we, we experienced right. it without the rain X. It, it did clear pretty well. Oh, go ahead. You guys got another one? Is it, are there going to be different configurations, forward seating, or anything beyond what you guys have here? Yes. So, good question. We forgot to mention that we will be offering our same forward seating module that we have on the 30, from the 32.2 all the way up to the 39. Actually, from the 29. Yeah, from the 29. Okay. We're retooling a version that's going to be a little bit wider, a couple more little uh, gimmicks and tricks into it, and okay. some really cool features. But, yes, it's already available uh, if you order one, and the tooling's pretty close to being done. So, yes, you can do Very that. Very good. Good question. Any more? Two more. Can you add a water maker? Yes, you can add a water maker. But you got to give us. So, if you, uh, if you give me these two live walls back here, <laughs> we can give you the ice chipper on one side and the water maker on the other. So if, you, But, again, you would, still have, you would still have two live walls standard on the back, and you could still have a forward live well. So where the, it was designed, that is the water maker, and that is the ice chipper. Okay. Very good. One more. I know we have a top speed uh, performance number from what we tested around 6970. Do we have any more performance numbers? I know you guys just basically threw these on, out of the box. Like you mentioned, you haven't even attempted to dial them in any further, but... What are you seeing at this point performance-wise? So, so, yes, we did our initial seat trial. We averaged 69 and a half in both directions, but that was without the tower. But that okay. was, remember, that was half fuel. Yes, we had Alexa, 400, it was over. five people, 400 gallons of fuel, and we averaged an average of 69 and a half in both directions. We will be testing more propellers. We'll be doing a lot more of that. My guess is if putting the tower on here, putting 600 gallons of fuel in the boat, we're going to be a 65-mile-an-hour boat. Okay. And besides the 450, you're doing anything with seven Marines? Is there another? Is there a max capacity when it comes to outboard? The horsepower on the transom is unlimited. Currently, we offer uh, this package. We also offer the Yamaha 425s in triples or quads as well. Okay. And it's future-ready. Future-ready. It this can handle is just an, about anything. This is an extra heavy-duty transom. This is almost double the thickness of our of our normal transom, uh, so the structure is pre-engineered for much higher horsepower. Okay, perfect.
Any more, guys? All right, guys. Well, thank you again. That'll thank do you, it. Alan. We appreciate the time, the walkthrough. Congratulations for an absolute work of art. You can see the time and effort, the team behind CV. I've been fortunate enough to see, you know, behind the scenes for quite some time. It's amazing to see where you guys have come and the quality of product you can continue to put out there. So we want to thank you from Center Consoles Only for giving us the opportunity to do this virtual boat show with you and to really dissect your boats as we have. We look forward to doing much more with you in the future. And you guys at home, if you enjoyed that, please do us a favor. Support Center Consoles Only by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Check us out, obviously, on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and just about any platform out there. We're likely on it. And thank you very much for your time. We'll see you again soon. Thank you, guys and gals.